as a part of science committee, we came together to find solutions to the subversive effects of the pandemic we have been living through within the last year. However, we are also well aware that the hard times always carry hope and the trigger enhancements in science and technology. Therefore, the meeting today is for sharing our best practices related to the work in remote and virtual laboratories so that we could sustain an interrupted period in science and innovation. Well, being one of the pioneering universities of Turkey in both research and education, Middles Technical University has always aimed changing the world through collaborative work, knowledge transfer, and giving to society here and elsewhere. However, METU placed science as a precursor of advancements for all humanity. On the track to attain these grand objectives, the university has observed and faced with many grand challenges within the last few decades, mainly induced by economic, social, political, as well as health issues on both domestic and the international platforms. The challenges we face so far taught us how we will think and design in a way we had not ever contemplated before, thus teamwork, collegiality, solution-oriented mindset, prioritizing science and humanity altogether, led METU community in history and as in today, result in numerous firsts and innovations which the university bestowed not only in its country, but also to the others. Some of these novelties include, but not limited to Turkish university built on a campus, first and the most developed techno policy in Turkey, first internet connection, provider and the DNS authority in the country, first central laboratory, first Turkish university to have ranked in the top 100 universities in the world and so on. So the list will continue with countless words and achievements. In other words, METU is historically known as the knowledge creator, trend maker and the hub for the intellect. These success stories made to accumulate throughout its history, render the university the most trusted institution in the country, according to some independent surveys. Similarly, Turkish edition of international popular journals indicate that METU has the richest social life for its students on its campus. This riches is easily attested by more than 1,000 social, cultural and sports events annually. Our achievements and the mentioned success are for sure not out of blue, but arise from dedication of its faculty mentors, devoted administrative staff, and as well as thanks to over 130,000 alumni. So METU community is proud to support their university, which has the most extensive scholarship scheme for its students in the country. Apart from the scholarship program, our students also supported many academic, social and cultural programs, such as undergraduate research projects, inter and multidisciplinary courses and research centers, or tree planting festival in which they learn how to transform a barren land into a man-made forest. Therefore, I'm very confident to state that thanks to academic and non-academic programs, as well as activities, METU students graduate not only with academic skills, but also they equipped with entrepreneurial leadership and digital skills, which will help them to contribute to the society in the new immediate era. No one predicts the future with a perfect precision and the future is full of uncertainties. However, we are ascertained by the fact that the future will be shaped by the determination, devotion, aspiration, and most importantly, the skills which we nurture our students whom stand of as our successors in science and not according to the designs. But finally, I would like to state that this webinar will hopefully shed a light when nurturing our successors in science so they will continue research and innovation on these unprecedented days. Well, I want to thank the UNICA President Professor Luciana Sesso, his team and colleagues in Brussels office, our office colleagues and International Cooperation Office, as well as the administrators of the Ankara University to realize this event. Our team, colleagues, and I always will be available for discussions and the institutional collaborations. So dear participants, before we start hearing our speakers' valuable thoughts related to remote and virtual labs, 
please allow me to share a two minute video of Middle East Technical University. And finally, I wish you all a very successful and a fruitful webinar. Thank you for the invitation, Laura. Yes, so one minute. Luciano, I think you can start to introduce the moderators. With, with yeah, uh, Sibella, please, I would like to leave the floor to Professor Susan first for the welcome address, uh, you know, by Ankara University first. Um, dear colleagues, good afternoon from Ankara. I am very pleased to be with you today. Uh, I would like to thank, of course, UNICA and President Professor Sasso uh, for this opportunity. Uh, also, I would like to thank the Rector of METU, Professor Kirk, for collaborating uh, with Ankara University uh, for this important webinar. Uh, today we have great speakers and very interesting subject to discuss and inform. Uh, we appreciate it for all speakers for their participation uh, to the webinar. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has caused major uh, disruption, of course, uh, for everyone. And be, the most maybe the uh, important one uh, to the higher education sector. Uh, globally, including research and international collaborations and education. Uh, with the start of the pandemic, many traditional research and education activities, uh, other than those related to COVID-19 research, were largely slowed and suspended. Uh, so the universities, of course, uh, suggested uh, different options to start with online or remote labs and lab substitutes. Uh, many universities uh, use licensed rich content that includes online labs and formative assessments available from publishers uh, 
and other discipline specific providers maybe. Uh, some universities created own labs or activities, uh, guide, guides uh, using simple video clips uh, of lab protocols and accompanying data sets for analysis uh, for the research and also the education. What we see now uh, is converting labs to remote teaching and learning requires creativity more than ever. The challenge is finding remote option uh, that will meet the learning outcomes, not necessarily an exact replication of the activity. So we have to be more creative for the future uh, activities, including uh, active learning strategies and provide uh, feedback to students on their analysis and application is an important subject now. Uh, so using materials available at home uh, or out of doors uh, for observation, it seems to be essential. Uh, by the time universities started to use this kind of possibilities, there are important questions uh, raised as well. Is it possible to use real world examples for authentic learning? Finding a real world example that illustrates or gives student practice or to observe the concept? Is there a current issue or study that relates to the learning outcomes for the lab? And is it easy to use a case study for students? Uh, is it relevant to their learning? And maybe most importantly, is it uh, possible assigning a design or your own experiment uh, using your materials found at home? So uh, I'm looking for the answers today. Uh, so we have uh, many distinguished guests uh, to discuss uh, their opinions, suggestions and examples. Uh, so I'm very happy to be here again. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Perfect. Thank you very much. So um, it is a great pleasure to be here also for me. I'm uh, Luciano Sazo. I'm the president of UNICA. Uh, thank you very much to the two University of Ankara, member of UNICA, to organize this important event uh, jointly. Uh, it is a good practice in UNICA to have universities uh, to cooperate, uh, to organize uh, important events together, especially when they are in the same city, like in, in this case. And the topic is extremely important for UNICA because we discuss, you know, the, uh, the crisis uh, that we are living, the COVID uh, pandemics from different point of views. And, uh, you know, we already did some events related to education. Uh, we spoke about virtual mobility, the reaction of universities to the pandemics and to the possibility of uh, uh, digitalization of several activities. But we know, of course, that concerning research, this is more challenging. But of course, uh, there are good solutions. So the idea today is to have a very pragmatic event uh, in which uh, several uh, speakers, you know, very knowledgeable on this topic will share uh, some ideas, possible solutions, which will be useful, you know, for the whole university community and not only for UNICA members. So I'm really looking forward to this uh, event uh, because I think it will be very useful again to discuss about uh, possible solutions or how actually to continue to do efficient and effective research in a, in a time in which not always we can have uh, research and students in the laboratories, but sometimes we have to use alternative uh, digital uh, possibilities. But again, uh, uh, after this crisis, I think we should keep uh, some of the good practices that we are experiencing today and some of them would be very useful, I think, for the development of our universities. Uh, in terms of research, uh, you know, UNICA is organizing other important activities. Uh, we just had uh, a few days ago an important event uh, promoted by the University of Ljubljana in Slovenia on intersectoral uh, research. Uh, in October also there was an event in which we focused on the possible funding for interdisciplinary and intersectoral uh, research. We are planning an event in April on uh, innovative uh, uh, models for uh, research in uh, UNICA universities. So I really would like to invite all the participants to look at the UNICA website. There are several opportunities, again, to share uh, good practices in the spirit of the uh, UNICA activities, uh, not only, of course, in relationship to research, but also to um, education and to many other activities uh, in which UNICA is involved. 
uh, I, I don't want to talk too much at this uh, time, not to uh, you know take away time to the important speakers we have today. But I would like to thank very much uh, Professor Koch, uh, the president of METU, for uh, promoting this event together with the vice president for research, uh, Mehmet uh, Zairek, and also Ibrahim Argun, who really worked very hard for the organization of this event uh, on behalf of METU. Together with Ankara, thank you very much to Professor Susan, who is a former vice rector for international relations and projects of the University of Ankara, and also member of the UNICA steering committee and also Arnur Osnut, who also worked uh, quite hard for this uh, important event, and the UNICA Secretariat uh, with Laura Brossico, Laura Colò, and Alexandra Duarte. So without further ado, uh, I would like to give uh, the floor again to Professor Zairek and Professor Susan, who will chair the session. Thank you. Uh, so I will introduce our first speaker, uh, Professor Kirshat Chaltai, uh, from METU Distance Education Research and Application Center. So I would like to give a, a short CV of uh, Kirshat Chaltai. He has a BS degree from METU Mathematics, MS degree from METU Computer Engineering and PhD from Indiana University, uh, Instructional System Technology and Cognitive Science, double PhD with a minor in Information Science. Research areas, uh, cognitive aspects of human learning system, technology and change learning, and STEAM education, educational technology in special education, human computer interaction, human performance technology, uh, electronic games and simulations, educational neuroscience and neurotechnology, distant education, social informatics, telecommunication, and the internet. The title of the presentation is How to Conduct Laboratories in the COVID-19 Period, Solutions from METU. Uh, please, Professor, floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Susan. Uh, I have a presentation. Let me share my screen and, and I will start my presentation. And I have a... I have a video, so I need to share some too. Uh, then, okay. I think now you can see my presentation. Okay, uh, dear uh, Nika community and dear, dear professors, it's a great pleasure for me to meet with you. Actually, I attended the first time in uh, UNICA meeting in 2014 in Lisbon uh, in one of the EduLab meetings and then I had a chance to work with the UNICA uh, community in the lead project uh, especially with Professor John Cornelis and Chris and actually uh, right now uh, UNICA is uh, also a partner organization in one of my uh, Erasmus Plus projects uh, we are uh, Matthew and UNICA collaboratively are working on uh, to improve higher education with eye tracking technology. So I hope uh, this meeting will also take us to further collaboration uh, with UNICA members and especially on uh, technology enhanced learning uh, area. Okay, today I'm going to talk about our experiences, uh, what we did or uh, what, how our professors uh, overcome the uh, COVID-19 period uh, problems, especially in conducting laboratories. Uh, I'm the director of Distance Education Application and Research Center, and we provide support to our faculty members and also uh, to our students uh, to, to conduct their courses uh, online during this uh, term. Uh, you see our uh, website in the uh, below. So there are some resources on our website, publicly available, and if you have any uh, questions and if you need to uh, co communicate with us, uh, please uh, feel free to, to write us. Okay, so moving from face-to-face -face education to distance education. Around this time last year, uh, all of the schools actually, uh, because of this pandemic situation, decided to move to online education. And actually, METU was uh, pretty lucky because we have a very good ICT infrastructure, uh, one of the best actually in Turkey. We have the, the fastest internet connection and we have the best uh, servers. 
And also for, uh, in terms of learning management systems and providing courses in online, uh, we have very robust uh, infrastructure. So we had no difficulty to move to uh, online education uh, immediately. And our professors, they conducted their courses uh, either synchronously or asynchronously. And uh, we had no interruption during, this, uh, in, during the, the, the last uh, one year. In terms of assessments, again, uh, thanks to our uh, infrastructure, we had no problems. We provided, we gave all the online exams, even to thousands of students uh, simultaneously. And some of our professors decided to give projects, assignments, etc. Again, no big problem on that part. Uh, but in terms of labs, I mean, if the course doesn't require hands-on activity, for example, uh, computer applications, uh, teaching programming languages or teaching uh, some software uh, for particular purposes, uh, they had no problem because students can access to those uh, software uh, from their houses. But uh, how about the hands-on labs, uh, like in the chemistry, physics or engineering departments, because students should come to a laboratory, conduct the lab, uh, but they are not allowed to come to campus. I mean, they, they were sent to their houses. Uh, even some uh, international students, they returned back to their countries. And uh, so we had to develop some uh, solutions. Again, uh, before coming to, the, uh, to our solutions, but I want to share uh, something. In, during this time in our campus and also in other uh, higher education institutions, uh, some faculty members, uh, criticized and they said that my field is special. Uh, so it's not possible to give a, a degree in, in my field in a fully online uh, way. Uh, it's, I cannot teach this course in online way, et cetera, et cetera. However, if an organization is actually ready uh, if, or if an organization is organized to teach everything online, it's possible. Uh, one of the best examples actually comes from the United Kingdom. Uh, the Open University actually is one of the leading universities worldwide, and they provide uh, degrees in science, engineering, math, and social sciences. It's possible. And this institution, for example, they also provide uh, labs and in, a, in a remote way, uh, like in this uh, Open Science Laboratory or Open Engineering Laboratory. They have no problem, and since 1970s, they have been providing quality education. But the problem is, uh, they established this organization fully online manner. However, our organizations and many uh, thousands of uh, universities, uh, they were designed to teach in a face-to-face -face manner. Uh, so they were not ready, and most of the organizations were not ready. So how did we overcome? Uh, again, we had some preparation in, uh, uh, beforehand. Uh, we have been uh, with our uh, organization, in our organization, we have been preparing some online materials. Uh, Meta is also one of the leading open courseware uh, provider uh, in Turkey. And since 2011, actually, we have been recording our labs uh, especially in uh, chemistry department, in physics department, uh, in introductory level uh, courses, introductory level uh, laboratories uh, were recorded and they were provided to our students and also to, to all the uh, community uh, all around in Turkey and also all around the world. Uh, even one of the, our uh, chemistry lab uh, lectures uh, won the, uh, one of the uh, best video lecture awards in two, 2011. So as soon as we have a pandemic situation, our department, uh, in order to provide the lab uh, activities, they uh, started to use those uh, videos. And interestingly, these videos actually were also used by other universities uh, around Turkey. Uh, other uh, universities, they conducted, contacted with us and they said, uh, we also would like to use the, your uh, chemistry lab videos or physics lab videos. So more than uh, 30 experiments uh, were freely available to, to everybody. And in addition to this, of course, I mean, some labs uh, were not ready or some experiments were not ready. And uh, we also in our department, in uh, audiovisual department, also helped the faculty members to record their uh, labs and to make those lab videos interactive. 
Uh, I just prepared a short uh, uh, port, uh, potpourri from different uh, labs. Uh, a very using... common sensor, the Hall effect sensor. Here, a professor from physics department, Dale Ross, uh, is teaching, explaining the, the experiment, and then students have to answer some of the questions interactively in, in, this, uh, in this case. Faraday's law is show you is... Based on what he has shown, then they were preparing some reports uh, regarding the, the experiment. Here we go. Now, in order to prevent oscillation of the puck while falling down, keep the pulley fixed and press on the P-switch. The expectation is that the slope of the baseline is equal to the field. Now the voltmeter reads the total potential difference on the system through the circuit. Ferric nitrate, nitric acid, potassium iodate, sodium thiocyanate. Copper electrode is connected and it is a meter. Pour 50 milliliters of tap water sample into the column. Those are just some snapshots from our uh, lab sessions. So our uh, departments, uh, they used uh, those uh, video recordings into, and they converted those uh, lab videos into interactive uh, lab videos. And so unfortunately, the students couldn't come to the lab, of course, physical lab, but they had an experience uh, in, uh, in an interactive video uh, manner. So. Uh, of course, I mean, we didn't have all the uh, lab experiments and there are some great resources around the world. Uh, one of the best is uh, from Colorado University, Boulder. Uh, their PET uh, experiments also used in our, some of our uh, introductory level uh, courses. They have a collection of uh, open uh, and freely available uh, lab simulations. So they were also used uh, heavily uh, by some of our uh, faculty members. So here you see two simulations uh, again from the flat uh, environment uh, simulations. Uh, I would like to share one of the interesting example uh, from metallurgical and met uh, materials engineering department. In this department, they have a uh, electron microscopy. And in normal case situations, uh, students should come to the lab and they have to use the electron microscopy. But uh, our, our professor uh, from this department, uh, Professor Aran, uh, he developed a system to make it accessible over the internet. So in this case, students had an access to this uh, lab uh, microscope uh, in the department, and they did their lab activities and they took uh, pictures uh, whatever it is this is not my field i don't know the details but they had an access to uh, our facility from their uh, houses so that those are also uh, there were a couple uh, examples I, I believe in our uh, campus and this was not the only thing actually we are also uh, experimenting some new technologies. I mean, how we can make our labs uh, more interactive and more effective. Uh, this is uh, also an example from our uh, labs with immersive technology uh, activity. Uh, here uh, we use uh, virtual reality uh, technology. And I believe uh, my colleague, uh, again from Matthew, uh, Professor Elif, she will also talk about this one in depth, but uh, we also did uh, prepare some chemistry ex uh, experiments. And let me share a short video again, uh, how students use this technology to conduct the, uh, the chemistry experiment in virtual reality environment. They use this uh, goggles you see on the screen and there are controllers in, in students' hands. And so uh, he or she, can make the actual uh, experiment. It's very realistic, very immersive technology, but it's very expensive. I mean, it's hard to uh, afford this one for 2000 students, for example, because the cost is about $10,000. So now we are working on a cheap immersive technology uh, project right now. 
uh, just uh, using... Professor Chaltai, we have a few yeah. minutes left. Yeah, I'm, I'm finishing. Thank right. you. And by using this cheap technology, which is in, in my hand right now, uh, we are testing and the, with a cell phone, with an inter, uh, with a smartphone, you can also actually create this kind of environment. And this is uh, extremely cheap. And you, this, by this way, you can bring the, uh, the activities and immersive uh, experiments into uh, your house. Uh, we are also in communication with the UNESCO. Uh, if we can arrange some uh, funding, this will be available to our students and also to, to other uh, community. And another, uh, before finishing, other consideration is uh, we are also with, the, with our departments, we are considering uh, can we bring or can we prepare some home experiment kits and send, the, for example, a chemistry experiment and send it to, uh, to students home and they can make the experiment at home. Uh, of course, there are some cost items and other issues, but this can also be a solution yeah, in pandemic situation also in the future. I mean, after pandemic, this can also be a, a good solution because Open University in, in UK, they use this kind of uh, solution. And finally, related with this one, labs in uh, everywhere pro is a part of this uh, previous one. Uh, we are uh, preparing some kind of prototype to conduct uh, and report the uh, professors. Again, this is one of the experimental work that we are developing a prototype in our campus. Students can conduct the experiment at their home. In, there is a uh, recording system in that, in that box. Results are recorded and then submitted to the professor. So let me stop over here. And uh, if there are further questions, uh, comments uh, regarding what we are doing, our projects, uh, please feel free to communicate, uh, to contact with me and with our uh, center. Uh, thank you very much for your for listening. And if there are questions uh, later. Uh, Uh, we will discuss at the end of the uh, seminar. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yes, Kursat, maybe you have to stop sharing to allow... Yeah, I uh, my computer actually somehow slowed down and <laughs> I'm trying to stop but it doesn't respond. <laughs> I... Okay. If you... Can you enforce me? Can you, can you stop my presentation? Apparently Somehow... not. Not, but someone else can start sharing while uh, another one is sharing. Kurshat, maybe you can you can leave. Maybe it works, no? Yeah, maybe you can leave and rejoin. Yes. Yeah. He can leave and then he can log in again. Again, yeah, maybe it's better. Shall I continue or wait for the screen to stop? Kursat, maybe you can try to, to leave the webinar and the, okay, okay, it's fine now. <laughs> okay, excellent, excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, I will continue with our next uh, distinguished speaker, Professor Naci Gündoğan from Council of Higher Education in Turkey, YÖK, and also Anadolu University. He's a member of the Anadolu University. Again, I'll uh, very shortly uh, present his uh, CV. 
e, Naci Hoca, e, Naci Gündoğan has his first degree from political sciences in Ankara University, master of science and PhD from Anadolu University in social policy and labor economics. He served as vice rector and rector of Anadolu University between 2010 and 2018. He is currently a member of the executive board in Council of Higher Education, uh, we call YÖK. He was uh, elected to full membership of Turkish Academy of Sciences, TÜBA in 2017 for his contributions to distant learning around the world he was awarded the title of honorary doctorate from the University of Columbia's Open and Distant Distance Learning in 2017. He is an expert in labor economics, youth unemployment, income distribution, poverty, working poverty, and trade unions. He will uh, present his talk under the title um, of a solution to laboratory application during the COVID-19 pandemic period, YÖK virtual lab laboratory project, which we call YÖK Sun Lab. Please, Professor Gündoğan, floor is yours. Thank you, Professor Zeyrek. Uh, let me share my presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to express my sincere thanks for inviting me as a speaker to the UNICA webinar. Uh, before going on to the subject, I would like to give brief information about Council of Higher Education and Higher Education in Turkey. Council of Higher Education is autonomous and constitutional body responsible for planning, governing, auditing of full higher education system in Turkey consists of 21 members. 14 of its members are appointed uh, by president, while seven members are elected by inter-university board serving for a period of uh, four years. Nine members elected from among uh, 21 members constitute the executive board. Turkish higher education system has achieved a very significant growth in recent years. There are 209 higher education institutions around the whole country. As for the number of the students enrolled in our higher education system, we have more than 8 million students. Uh, Turkey is now the top ranking country within the European higher education area in terms of student numbers. Considering uh, teaching cadres, we have more than 174,000 academic staff, while more than 80,000 of them are faculty members with various titles. Uh, these slides show the number of the number and degree variety of uh, programs uh, in Turk higher education system. Uh, two years ago, uh, the Council of Higher Education started the digital transformation project to support universities with limited infrastructure and expertise to transition to distance learning. As part of the project, a course titled Learning and Teaching in Higher Education in the Digital Age was given to more than 10,000 academics in 16 universities. Another course named Digital Literacy was given to over 50,000 uh, students. Uh, due to the global epidemic, with the transition to distance uh, education in our universities in March, solutions for courses uh, requiring laboratory applications began to be solved. YÖK Virtual Laboratory Project was launched in June 2020 with a comprehensive meeting held by YÖK and the uh, TÜBİTAK, the Scientific and Technological Research Council in Turkey. Under the coordination of YÖK, 24 academicians uh, from 11 different universities and 12 experts from uh, TÜBİTAK took part in this project. Considering uh, teaching uh, uh, in this project, uh, academics, uh, academicians in chemistry, uh, physics and distance education from Turkey's leading universities took part in the project. Uh, the academicians and software developers 
who took part in the project worked entirely on a voluntary basis. It was decided to conduct uh, general chemistry and general physics laboratory courses in various programs of our universities, especially science and engineering faculties and vocational schools. This is physics team uh, of our project uh, and chemistry team uh, from different universities and academicians and the distance education team. And these are uh, universities uh, within the project and uh, project universities uh, on the map, search map. And uh, the system worked like this. Uh, one operator from each university was determined. Uh, these uh, operators registered the lecturers uh, who will teach the relevant courses at the university. And the lecturers registered the students who will take the course as users. Uh, the lecturers of the courses in each uh, university made the program of the students defined in the system and enabled them to use these laboratories uh, weekly. And the system was provided to report the results of each experiment, uh, like class participation, uh, uploading uh, an experiment uh, report, open-ended questions like this. In this project, uh, trainings uh, were provided uh, to the operators in 18 universities and 211 uh, faculty members. Uh, the implementation of the course Take, takes place in three stages. Firstly, teaching, then experiment, and uh, evolution. Uh, each experiment includes a lecture video and PDF file, and students uh, watch the video before starting uh, the experiment, and uh, before the laboratory study, a questionnaire with yes or no questions uh, is implemented to evaluate uh, to the students' competence and knowledge. At the end of the experiment, the students is asked open-ended questions. After answering the questions, the students upload them into the system. The folders of the students having answered the questions are sent to the faculty staff who is responsible for the course. Uh, briefly, students are free at uh, virtual labs, they recognize uh, their mistakes and have opportunity to repeat. Uh, while students are conducting the experiments, uh, there's flow of audio, textual, animatic information, and students conduct experiments step by step on uh, their own. And plus the evolution, uh, students are evaluated uh, through open ended questions following the experiment. These are uh, physics experiments. Uh, and these uh, uh, chemistry experiments. Uh, entries to the system have been uh, made uh, via e-government uh, and operators declared by universities are authorized to log into the system via, uh, via uh, e-government. This is uh, the entrance of the e-government getaway. Uh, some application examples. Uh, this is getaway. And at the end of the, my presentation, I would like to show a short video of the lab application. Um, first, this <laughs> is about safety in chemistry lab. Example. Uh, uh, the second lesson is introduction of uh, laboratory equipments. Uh, and the experiments can be done by, by the students uh, using a mouse. Uh, uh, let me continue to give uh, information about the project while you watch the uh, video. Uh, approximately 
15,000 students uh, studying at various uh, faculties of 18 universities benefited from the virtual laboratory courses uh, that started in October. Uh, starting uh, from the spring semester of the academic year, uh, with the inclusion of 30 state universities in the project. The number of universities benefiting from the virtual laboratory will increase to 48 and the number of students to 50,000. Uh, distance learning, of course, uh, cannot completely uh, replace face-to-face -face education. I think these two should be considered as complementary, not alternative to each other. Uh, using distance uh, learning tools uh, can sometimes have very important advantages. Uh, you save time, uh, it can be more economical, uh, and if you use uh, the appropriate tools, you can create a much more effective learning environment. Uh, universities not investing uh, in buildings and replacing giant campuses with smaller scale technological and functional structures uh, can provide uh, serious savings. Uh, the digital competencies of both students and teachers uh, improved during the pandemic uh, process. They learned distance learning. Uh, I believe that digital applications uh, such as virtual laboratories will continue to be uh, used after uh, pandemic. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.